Atomic Habits by James Clear. What I want to do is I want to pull a few points from the four laws that were discussed in the book. I want to discuss it from the perspective of the Robert Dilt's logical levels. And I want to further dimensionalize what I learned as well as my experience when it comes to forming habits. So one of my favorite elements when it comes to forming habits is the slight edge, something I learned from the slight edge by Jeff Olson, which is also discussed in the compound effect by Darren Hardy, which is also discussed in his book. It is so easy to overestimate the importance of one defining moment and underestimate the value of making small improvements on a daily basis. Improving by 1% isn't particularly notable. Sometimes it's not even noticeable, but it can be far more meaningful, especially in the long run. The difference a tiny improvement can make over time is outstanding. Here's how the math works out. If you can get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. Conversely, if you get 1% worse each day for one year, you'll decline nearly down to zero. What starts as a small win or a minor setback accumulates into something much more. So the idea behind this is that when it comes to forming habits, we don't have to make this overwhelmingly complex. We can focus on making small incremental improvements every single day. And as a result of that, that will compound with time to create dramatic success. See, if you drink eight to 10 glasses of wa water and you, you know, you've never done that before, all of a sudden you start drinking eight to 10 glasses of water a day, it's not going to make that much of an impact on your health, but doing it over the course of months and years is going to have a positive impact on your cells, mobility, a lot of different positive impacts, brain functionality, and so forth. The same is to be said about exercise. If you just go to the gym right now and then never do it again, it's not going to make a difference. But if you go to the gym and you exercise on a consistent basis, you know, five days a week or so forth, over the course of even a month, it's not going to make a difference really. You might notice a little bit of a difference, but a couple months, three months, five months, one year, two years, you're going to start noticing a big difference. The same is to be said about business success. See, the core areas that I'm always uh, working on is direct response marketing, consultative selling, copywriting. And these important areas cultivate the ability to persuade deal-making, marketing and innovation, as Peter Drucker said, being the most important areas of a business, everything else being an expense. By working on these every single day, a little bit at a time, my results have increased over time. It didn't happen overnight. And this can be something that can be very discouraging for those starting out in business. They'll try to learn a business skill and master it in one month and aren't able to produce the results and might throw in the towel. Instead of making a commitment to improve a little bit every day over the long haul. So the way we do this is by forming habits, by realizing that you have 24 hours in a day and a whole bunch of that time is dedicated towards creating the success you want. And we want to instill within that time that you dedicate towards your success, positive behaviors that are repeated in converted into habits and those habits over the course will keep increasing our success output. As Earl Nightingale said in The Strangest Secret, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Thus, in order to progressively realize a worthy ideal, we want to form positive habits. And we want to replace negative habits with positive habits. So a habit is a behavior that has been repeated enough times to become automatic. That's it. We have already formed habits, positive habits and negative habits. And by understanding the principles of this book, you're able to create positive habits. You're able to replace negative habits with positive habits. And when repeated enough times, the behavior becomes automatic. The ultimate purpose of habits is to solve the problems of life with as little energy and effort as possible. The beautiful thing about forming habits is in the beginning, it might take a little bit of willpower, but with repetition, doing it over and over again, it becomes easy, it becomes second nature. You become unconsciously competent at whatever it is. So a behavior like waking up and making your bed over and over again becomes a habit. And then you do something called habit stacking, which we'll talk about in a moment, where maybe after you make your bed, you go over to the kitchen and drink 500 milliliters of water. And in the beginning, it's going to require a little bit of willpower. And we'll talk about sequencing and setting it all up. But the repetition of doing that is going to form a habit. 
And the implications on doing those two things will be huge when it comes to physiological positive implications and psychological well-being implications. Because one of the most important things that we can do is right when we may wake up and, you know, I read my affirmations, right after that is I make my bed. Because that lays the foundation for a successful day. It is a habit that I've been practicing for many years and wasn't always a habit. But the implications of doing that has such a positive impact on my psychology that laid the foundation for even more habits. And again, all you got to do is add these little habits and you'll see 1%, 1% improvements. And over the course, it's going to create a lot of success. The four laws of behavior change are a simple set of rules which you can use to build better habits. They are, number one, make it obvious. Number two, make it attractive. Number three, make it easy. And number four, make it satisfying. So let's talk about these. Make it obvious. The process of behavioral change always starts with awareness. You need to be aware of your habits before you can change them. So one of the things that I've really put a lot of emphasis on nowadays is journaling, taking notes. I don't follow any formal journaling process, but what I'm interested in is the various behaviors, the way I respond to things, and my habits that I do every single day. And then when I ask myself, how can I optimize them? How can I make them even better? See, one of my favorite sayings is the enemy of the great is the good. So once you are able to create success in your life, the goal is to get 1% better, optimize it. So instead of doing a certain kind of direct response marketing or cultivating it in a cer certain kind of way or doing things a certain way, I'll optimize it to do it even better. Instead of going to the gym and doing a certain kind of routine, which has now brought me to a certain level of success, I'll go in and change my routine around so that I can get better output. Cardiovascular, eating healthy, all these different kinds of things we can optimize. But it first starts with awareness of taking inventory of the positive behaviors and the negative behaviors, the positive habits and the negative habits, and making a commitment to start changing one or two at a time. Now, what you want to do is realize that replacing negative habits with positive ones is where it's at, not only because it will have positive implications, but number two is that you really only get 24 hours in a day. And what you do within that 24 hours a day is going to determine the kind of success that you get. And what you want to do is you want to incorporate as many positive, successful habits as possible. Now, the way I like to look at this is broad dimension. There was a time in my life where I just focused on making money and just financial success. And then I realized that, you know, I was lagging in a lot of other areas of my life that are important to me right now. So now what I've done is I've taken a more holistic approach to life and I look at all the areas that are important to me and I contribute to each of those and I realize that all of them when contributed to all as one together by you know dedicating a little bit of time every day for each of them contribute to overall success and well-being on the long term sustainable making improvements incremental 1% 1% every day and over the course of years of putting emphasis on this my life continues to improve in not just one area of my life, but all areas. So this is where we get into the concept called habit stacking, habit stacking. So one of the greatest things that I had incorporated in my life that not only contributed to my business success, but well-being, happiness, joy, and physical health was my morning routine. So my morning routine goes like this. I wake up, I read my affirmations, I make my bed, I go over to the bathroom, go over to the kitchen, drink some water, 500 milliliters of water, have a cup of coffee, go to the gym, work out, come back home, go to shower, get out of the shower, get dressed, have a nice breakfast, meditate for 20 minutes, and then start my day. That entire sequence repeated for 10 plus years has made a profound impact on my health, my fitness, my well-being, my ability to stay focused and all the other benefits that I got from meditation. And the way I put it in was using the process in this book, habit stacking. He calls it habit stacking. I started off by making a commitment that I was just going to wake up and read my affirmations. And that behavior repeated after an extended period of time turned into a habit where I no longer think about it. I just get up and do it. 
And then I added making my bed, making sure that I do that. And then I added ensuring that I get my 500 milliliters of water every morning. And I just kept adding one thing after another, habit stacking. And then I started stacking my habits even into my workday. So in my productivity training program, I talk about how I sequence my morning, I sequence my workday and so forth. And everything is set up in a way that facilitates the net result of what I'm looking to achieve. And it spreads out into all areas of my life. For example, I dedicate time for social and communication after work, personal development, study, reflection, and so forth. It's all part of that. And it's just repeatedly doing it every single day that has contributed to success and continues to contribute to success and a heightened degree of awareness on how I could do it better because I'm always looking to optimize. People with high level of self-control tend to spend less time in tempting situations. It's easier to avoid temptation than resist it. So one of the biggest contributing factors in your ability to stay focused on your habit stack is your environment. If you have a lot of temptation, if you've got junk food on the table and in the cupboards and so forth, you're more likely to break the habit stack. Instead of eating the healthy breakfast, you might reach for some unhealthy breakfast. Or you might snack on some junk food, which will create a bad habit. You might actually find yourself craving junk food at that same time every day because you've now formed a habit. The same is to be said about distractions when it comes to social media or whatever else. If your environment has all these elements in there that distract you, that break your habit stack, then what's going to happen is the repetition of allowing yourself to be distracted or breaking that habit stack is going to form that negative habit. So what do we do? Self-awareness. We take notes of the different ways we get distracted. We take notes of the various ways we derail and move into maybe a negative behavior or a negative habit. And then we ask ourselves, how can we change that environment around? Perhaps it's as easy as just not buying the junk food so that you realize that in order to go and get the junk food, you actually have to, you know, get in your car and drive up the street into the grocery store and get the junk food. Too much work. So less temptation, less need to resist it, which means more energy, better sense of well-being, and the likelihood to maintain that habit stack. Just as it is easy to turn a behavior with repetition into a habit, is it easy to add another habit and so forth and repeat the habit stack over and over again till the habit stack is now an overall powerful habit, which contains all these sub-habits. Number two, make it attractive. So one of the things that we realize is that we're going to be motivated towards doing the things that we want to do. Now, this is the power here, is I've learned to associate everything towards my vision. So I believe in you know, Napoleon Hill's number one definite chief aim, picking one goal and making that the number one chief aim and focus. You know, when you create success and you hit that goal, create another one. Now he talks about goals in here, his view on goals, but I'm going to share my perspectives on what I'm talking about to actually contribute. So the way I look at it is everything that I have in my life, all areas of my life are associated towards my vision. So in order to bring forth my vision, which is, you know, not just creating a certain success in one area, but all areas of my life, require me to have positive habits in all these different areas. And they contribute to each other. For example, I have a strong association with physical fitness and eating properly towards business success because I've correlated it and seen that by not eating properly, not exercising, I'm sluggish all throughout the day. And as a result of my sales calls, my consulting calls don't go as well. But if I eat properly, and I exercise properly, then the reward of a proper conversation I have with one of my clients is very satisfying for me, and I look forward to that. So if I find myself reaching for junk food, for example, all I have to do is reflect on the implications of that and realize that I won't have that positive feeling when I'm dealing with my clients, and that's enough right there to you know, not eat the junk food or whatever. That's enough right there to not miss the workout. Now, the same is to be said for just about any area of your life. For me, when I have a very productive day, 
and I'm on sequence and I eat healthy and I exercise, that contributes a lot to my well-being in my personal life, which is very important to me. I'll have more energy. I'll be a lot more in flow. I'll be, I'll be a lot more fun and positive, And that's very motivating to me. So what I'm doing is I'm taking all these things and I'm connecting them together to make it attractive towards the number one vision that I have. It's all part of it. It's all one. And by connecting each of these to each other, and it might require you to sit down and you know, look at how one thing is connected to each other, you can reframe and reassociate. This is the power of the brain. You can change your values and beliefs around by reprogramming your subconscious mind. We've already talked about this many times. And you can create associations. You can associate a certain behavior or habit towards another goal that you have, and you can find the connections. You can create it. Now, what about bad habits? You can do the same thing. You can reframe the associations you have about them. Maybe you get some immediate gratification as a result of that. Now, one of my reframes for the instant gratification element is that I'm a coach, I'm a consultant, and I make these videos, so I do not want to be a hypocrite. And I have this feeling that if I can focus on doing the thing that's more long-term, then I'll put out better content because I'll speak with more authenticity. I'll be able to create better products and services and so forth to serve this market. That's usually motivating to me. So I'm more likely to choose the positive enforcing, positive behavior, the positive element, and so forth, than the negative one that provides the instant gratification because I associate those positive behaviors, positive habits towards the vision of what I want to create, which is content, which is the success, and the really the state transference that I'm giving over to my clients. Number three, make it easy. Create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. Create an environment where doing the right thing is as easy as possible. Your environment has a huge impact on your performance. Pretty much everything that you are is a net result of your environment, circumstances, life experiences, and so forth. Your environment has a huge role in whether or not you're going to be consistent on your positive behaviors and whether you're going to adopt or have your negative or bad behaviors encouraged. We want to keep this in consideration because it's very, very, very influential or programmed by the external world through our subconscious. So what we want to do is set up our environment, take inventory. Again, the awareness piece is really huge. Is take inventory of the different elements in your environment that facilitate bad behaviors and make some changes. Make some changes in your environment Make some changes on who you associate with, where your attention and awareness goes. Declutter your desk. Set up certain parameters on your computer so you don't get distracted. Turn off notifications. Make it easy on yourself. Because if you have those elements and you're easily distracted and you're easily derailed, you're going to have to use willpower to get back on track. And the goal is to create a habit stack. Now, your entire day doesn't have to be a habit stack. It could just be for certain elements of your day or certain parts of your day, like the morning routine. But during that morning routine, you've got to set up an environment if you want to facilitate this easier that doesn't distract you. Maybe you've got to set up everything in a way where your gym clothes are set up. And you know, as mentioned, drinking the uh, 500 milliliters of water, I always make sure that the glass that I use to drink it is sitting on the kitchen counter and so forth. And everything is sequenced. So the same is to be said on the flip side when it comes to bad behaviors. We can increase the friction when it comes to bad behaviors. So not having the bag of chips in the house or making it hard so that the sequence can't be broken to move into a direction of a bad habit is more likely to keep you on the sequence, or as he calls it, the habit stack. And the repetition of doing it turns that into habit, and eventually that's no longer in your awareness no more. Your environment is now supportive of the vision or the sequence that you want to create. Now, here's something that I found to be really useful, the two-minute rule. So one of the things that I learned in NLP is the concept of chunking up and chunking down. Now, this is really valuable when it comes to project management and so forth, or just doing a project. You can look at the entire project and it can seem really overwhelming, 
And you can take that project and you can break it down into certain steps, parts of the project. Now you can take those parts of the project and you can break it down to even smaller steps. And you can say to yourself, you know, as you sequence your day and so forth, I'm just going to do the first two minute element of this. That's all I'm going to do. And then when you do it, you get in the groove of it. So it could be something like, this is an actual example that I have from my uh, getting into the routine and staying in the habit of going to the gym. I used to just say, whenever I never felt like going to the gym, all I'm going to do is just get dressed and put on my shoes. That's just the goal. It's not to go to the gym, just do that. And then once I did that, I set up the next step, which was just start walking towards the gym. And before you know it, you're at the gym and away you go. The same is to be said about, you know, if you want to create a social life for yourself and you want to go out and connect with people, if you're stuck in the house all day, you know, the idea of going and connecting with people and socializing can be really overwhelming. But however you say, the goal is to just get dressed and just walk out of this door. That's it. That's all I got to do. You'll eventually find yourself, you know, connecting with people, going into the networking events and so forth. Now, that's really powerful because what that does is that becomes a habit. And obviously, what's next from that habit? The next positive action. Number four, make it satisfying. One of the most satisfying feelings is the feeling of making progress. So what do I do that has really helped me? Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. The goal is to not try to make this overwhelmingly complex and make as little as 1% improvements every day. But how do you know if you're making improvements unless you've got key performance indicators, or as he calls it, habit trackers? So one of the things that I like to do is I like to track my metrics. I track the time that I invest in a workday. I track key numbers, leads generated, clients, sales, and so forth. And when it comes to fitness, I track the amount of calories I consume, proteins, fats, and carbs for fitness goals. I track my workouts and so forth. And the goal is to increase in these areas. And even when it comes to, like, for example, in business, if you've got to make some sales, if a large part of what you do as far as bringing the business in is selling, then you can break that down. I use a variation of the two-minute rule and say, all I got to do is call five people and that's it. My goal is to connect with five new prospects a day. Now, doing that becomes a habit. And as a result of connecting five with five new prospects, you improve your communication skills, your selling skills. You'll start closing more deals. Your closing ratios go up as you start to optimize that. And that's it. You just got to break it down. And there's a huge satisfying feeling after you have set a goal of saying, I'm just going to call five new prospects and actually do that. So habit trackers and other visual forms of measurement can make your habits satisfying by providing clear evidence of your progress. So success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. We want to increase the progress, but we have to first track it. It can be very discouraging to just repeat the habits every single day and not realize the results we have. And we can set up certain ways. Maybe you can measure your progress once a week if it's a fitness goal. We can set certain things in place so we can track and measure the results that we're getting and realize that over the long, long haul, the course of doing this for, you know, a year or two or five years, the success is going to keep increasing. Another thing is setting up an accountability partner. So one of the main reasons why I find individuals are bringing on coaches and consulting clients or not consulting clients, but consultants nowadays is they have somebody to hold them accountable. Now, this can be really valuable, but you don't have to bring on a coach or a consultant. You can find somebody to keep you accountable because one of the deep motivating factors when it comes to human psychology is we care deeply about what others think of us, and we do not want others to have a lesser opinion of us. So this can be really powerful. Having somebody that you can connect with and say, these are the habits that I'm instilling. This is my habit stack. My commitment is by the end of this year, have this habit stack in place. And we're going to start with one habit. So I'd like you to hold me accountable. Maybe I'll give you $20 if I don't complete the the task, whatever, for an extended period of time. Say five days in a row, I'm going to complete it. And if I miss a day, I'm going to give you $20. And, you know, in the course of maybe 30 days, I'm only allowed to miss two or three days. And then after I've done that for 30 days, I'm going to add another one, another habit to my habit stack. And I'm going to keep doing this. That can be really beneficial. And there was a period in my life where 
I had integrated that and it was very useful. Now let's tie this into the Robert Diltz model because I'm a huge fan of it in transformation, behavioral change, and so forth. It's been really beneficial for me. So in the Robert Diltz model, you got your vision, identity, values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, and environment. Your vision, we talked about earlier, definite chief aim, what you want to create in your life. But not just one area. Think of broad spectrum because then you can create those associations, as mentioned. And then your identity is really how you see yourself, what's in your subconscious and so forth, which is captured through awareness, taking notes. Your values and beliefs, the reframes, you want to change and reframe, you want to create the associations towards the positive habits and the associations from moving away from the negative habits. What capabilities do you need to cultivate and so forth to bring forth your vision? These are the you know, core areas. We'll, we'll talk about how this relates in a moment. And then the behaviors, these are the areas that we want to turn into habits. And then your environment, the environment having an influence. And you know the goal is to bring your vision into the environment, but realize something. The environment has the ability to derail you from your goal. So you want to stay focused and want to set up conditions in your environment that facilitates the best behaviors that turn into habits, facilitates the habits. So let's look at how I'm going to overlay the Robert Diltz model, pragmatically speaking, bring this all together in our discussion. And I recommend reading this book because obviously he covers way more and there's a my insights and perspectives in the book. Let's bring it all together using the Robert Diltz model. Vision. Do you have a clear mental image of the person you wish to become? This is very important because then you can determine what kind of habits you want to form to create that vision. Number two, identity. What subconscious mind area manifests as behaviors that are not in alignment with your vision? And what habits can you install to rewrite the subconscious mind to be in alignment with your vision? Now, we are a product of our environment. Our environment programs our subconscious mind. And it facilitates certain kinds of behaviors that are either positive or negative. So we want to be aware of that. Values and beliefs. What reframes can you create to make habits attractive to you and unattractive to you if it's a undesirable habit? Now, this is one of the best skills that you can get and develop in the process of progressively realizing your goals and dreams, I found, is the ability to reframe, the ability for you to emotionally talk to yourself to connect yourself to feeling positive towards the good habit. You get better at it with practice. And to be able to emotionally get yourself to not want to do the negative habit, but rather do the positive habit. Reframes, that was covered in the book. Capabilities. What are the core capabilities related to your vision and how do you include them in your habit stack? So for me, direct response marketing, consultative selling, copywriting, innovation and productivity are very, very important. Now, behaviors, these are the ones we want to turn into habits. So the capabilities part is very important because it's the capabilities that you are going to be doing every single day. And these are just categories, you know, productivity skills, selling skills, marketing skills, fitness, uh, going certain kinds of fitness routines, making healthy decisions when it comes to eating and so forth. These are all capabilities. And within those capabilities are behaviors. And when repeated, turns into habits. So what are the behaviors that need to be removed and what behaviors need to be installed or instilled? And then finally, your environment. Create the ideal environment to cultivate, encourage, and bring forth ideal behaviors. Environment being a huge influence on your ability to stay focused and remain in your habit stack or has the ability to negatively influence you into forming new habits that aren't necessarily related to your vision, which repeated with time will turn into bad habits or new behaviors that will be, when repeated over time will turn into bad habits and hinder your progress. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.